Hi guys, welcome to my first tutorial for 2017. So I found this really beautiful, cute stock photo on iStockphotos.com and I really wanted to do this. I love the cute little mousy face and it's quite a decent size. And the reason I sort of chose this one is because it could seem like a bit of an intimidating or challenging image for um, anyone to start. So I want to teach you sort of what sort of approach to take for things that seem a bit scary or seem very busy like this. So you like, do I have to draw every detail or how would you sort of go about the whole process? Now I am also going to be experimenting a bit with this because I'm going to be using my Prismacolor markers as an underlay. I do want to create a bit of a background just to add some color to the background and with that I'm going to use these Reeve watercolor um, paints and I'm just going to sort of spray the paper or wet the paper and just add some color all randomly, nothing that's detailed. Once that's done then I'm going to come over the hedgehog with the colored pencils. I'm going to use my Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils for this one and that's what I'm going to do over the marker pen. So I haven't created a drawing like this before or I haven't sort of used this much mixed media before. I don't have that much experience with markers and I also don't have experience at all with watercolor paint. So it's going to be fun to see how it's going to all turn out. It may possibly be a total fail. Um, I do find that I have, I'm quite confident at the moment or at this point in my drawing career to fix things. So if I do stuff something up, I tend to be able to fix things or find a different look or way to make it look a bit better if I do sort of ruin a certain area of a drawing. So that's what's going to happen. The markers, I'm using three colors as an underlay. So I am using my Prismacolor Premier markers and I'm using Yellow Ochre Cream. Uh, the yellow ochre is PM18, the cream is PM23, and the golden rod is PM69. So um, I'm just going to use very light colors as an underlay. I'm not going to worry about details. If it comes out streaky, I'm not going to worry about that either. Because from videos that I've seen before, it's quite easy to get the streaky look of the marker away when you add color pencil on the top. So it's nothing to be concerned about. All I'm doing is creating an underlay for the marker because when I do the background in watercolor paints, I may potentially put a um, masking fluid over the top of the hedgehog and I don't want to sort of lose my outline because if you put masking fluid over, color, over graphite, it tends to lift the graphite off the pencil and I don't want to lose my guidelines that I've already put on the paper. So I'm going to see how it goes. So with putting the markers at the bottom layer, I can at least put the masking fluid over the top. And if it removes a bit of it, that's okay. As long as it doesn't remove all of it, then I still should be able to see my outlines and hopefully not damage the rest of the hedgehog when I am adding the watercolor paints to it. So this is the picture and I think I'm just going to block in the eyes and the nose. So I'll do that in detail in color pencil first and then I'll do the rest in markers and then we can get into the background. So with the eyes and the nose, because it's pretty much a focal point in this drawing, I do want it to look really good and perfect. So I'm just going to start off with that. Okay, so using the black luminance pencils, I am going to block in the eyes. The pupils are the darkest areas, so I was quite happy to use more pressure there. So always pay attention to your reference photo as you draw, and then you can use the same color and sort of work out which areas need more pressure than others. And that saves you from using three different pencils for getting the same sort of values from one. So the reference photo is from iStock Photos, and the outline was drawn by tracing the image from my projector onto the drawing paper. So that's probably the easiest way to do it. If you do have a projector, then um, you can adjust it to any paper size and you can just move it back or forwards to make it bigger or smaller. So it does make it a little bit easier. Um, also, when I trace the spikes on the hedgehog, I trace the darkest areas. I wasn't going to trace around every single spike. Um, so by merely tracing the darkest areas or shadows, you'll have enough to work with later on. So yeah, as I was saying with the projector, um, 
it is the easiest way, but it isn't the only way. There are many different ways of tracing, so don't feel like you need to get one. Um, you can use tracing papers, uh, trace straight from the monitor, or use a grid, or anything like that. Okay, so now that I have the darkest areas complete, I will lightly block in the rest of the eyes using the same color. So this is where value is important. You can see that I am creating a three-dimensional sort of look to the eye already just by using one color and using different pressures. So now using the Payne's Gray 30% number 504, I'm going to block in the rest of the eye just over the area that I lightly blocked in earlier with the black pencil. So coming in with the Sapia 50% number 906, I'm going to add some brown on the side of the eye just to give it a little more color. Coming over the pupil again, just with some black, I just want to darken the pupil up a little bit more. So now that we have a few layers of color on the eye, we can blend it with solvent. The solvent I'm using is the Zested Pencil Blender, and I'm using a number two paintbrush with a small point so that I can blend the small areas of the eye. So adding solvent like this takes away the crayon look and makes it look a lot smoother. Um, because it pushes the colors into the texture of the paper. Already we can see the eye is looking smooth, the crayon look is gone, and it's just making everything look a little more realistic and three-dimensional. And then once we add those highlights in later, it's going to give it a much greater effect. So whatever's left on my brush now, the bit of color and the bit of solvent that's left on there, I'm just adding that to the surrounding areas of the eye as well, so that it doesn't just look like stark straight lines or sharp lines, and that's just going to add to the realism as well by making sure that the eye itself is blending in with the areas around it too. So to easily add a highlight to the eye, I am going to use the white 0.7mm Uni Posco paint marker and I am simply going to add three little dots onto the eye. So I'm still paying attention to my reference photo carefully and just doing this immediately adds a moist look to the eye and therefore makes it look a little bit more realistic. So moving on to the next eye, we'll use the black again and repeat the process taken with the first eye. So for the areas that are darker, like the pupil, just add a little more pressure. So now I'm coming in with the Payne's Grey again. So like we did with the other eye, we will add this color. So we're going to avoid the pupil, which is darker because we want to leave that really dark and just go in the rest of the areas that are a bit lighter. And as a final layer before blending, add a warmer color. So we're going to use the Sapia 50% number 906. Mm -hmm. 
and again I'm gonna blend with the solvent so working what's left on the brush on the surrounding areas of the eye and then coming in with a paint marker to add the last few highlights So you see I avoided an area which is a little hair over the top of the eye. I'm going to cover this later because I don't want it there. But from the reference photo there is a hair over the eye so that's why I did that. But that will be covered later. So using the black pencil I'm going to start defining the lines of the nostril. using the black luminance pencil still and sort of doing the same thing as I did with the eyes so I'm just going to use different sort of pressures to create value in the nose while I sort of block in the rest of the nose with the color I did also add a tinge of red in the nostrils to give it a bit of that pinkish look but I didn't put that on the screen I'm sorry so using burnt sienna 10% number 862 I'm gonna start filling in the pinkish areas of the nose so I'm gonna block it all all over the nose I'm gonna block this color in And then I'm already blending this with the solvent, regardless of the small amount of layers. So I will be adding uh, further details after the background is complete. And whatever's left on the brush, sort of pushing that to the sides. So coming in with the Burnt Sienna 10% number 862, I'd like to add a little more of this colour for warmth and more of that pinkish sort of fleshy colour in the nose. So now we're going to use our markers, so using the Prismacolor Cream PM23 I am going to create a rough underlayer before we add the frisket over the top of the entire hedgehog. So using Cream PM23 I'm paying attention to my reference and blocking in some of the light colours. So I am using a flicking sort of upward downward motion making sure that I do keep making the hairs go in roughly the right direction. So even though it is an underlayer we still want to pay attention to the reference and make sure we we sort of coloring in the right direction and doing it in the right sort of colors in the right way.
Using Yellow Ochre PM18, I'll add some darker values next to the lighter ones. Again, just following the reference carefully. The colors don't have to be exact, we just want to get the value and the shadows down, or a rough idea of where the values are located on the hedgehog. Okay, so we're not too fussed about um, getting the exact right colors, as long as we're sort of getting this value next to the lighter values, because we want these two colors to sort of blend in together. So now we're going to switch to the Goldenrod PM69 for the even darker areas. So the areas around the ears and um, by the feet maybe. So just looking at the reference photo and making sure that we are filling in the darkest values. So even though the color might actually really be darker than this color, that's okay because we're going to get the colors right when we come over it with the pencils. So I'm still using the golden rod and I'm going to add in all those shadows of all the spikes all around the back of the hedgehog. I'm not trying to complete every spike in completely detailed. All I'm trying to do is put the values in there, uh, just the darkest areas of the spikes and then we can add the details much later. So again, when you have marker marks like this on your piece of paper, if you're going to put frisket or masking fluid over the top, by the time that you remove it, it's not going to remove the color off with it. So that's a real bonus. If you just put it over graphite, it does tend to lift the graphite off. So you'd have to put down darker lines. Which I don't like to do with graphite pencils because it pushes creases into your paper. So I'd rather sort of get a foundation down the bottom first. Okay, so now I'm using the Deco Peach PM11 to fill in the pink areas on the feet. This is just a base tone and I'm going to block in the feet completely with this color. I'm also going to add a bit by the mouth and on top of the nose because it does have pinkish values there. So now using the cream PM23, I'll block in the entire hedgehog. I don't want any of the white of the paper because we'll be bringing out the white using the paint marker. Also when you do underlay it like this with some color, later on when you're adding your white wax base pencil over the top, it does make it easier for that white pencil to show up. So now that we have the underlayer established, I am going to cover the entire hedgehog with frisket. So now that we have the underlayer established, I'm going to cover the entire hedgehog with frisket. Outline the hedgehog just beneath where the spiky bits stick out and we'll cover the spiky bits later using masking fluid. So once you have the outline, cut it out neatly with scissors and then stick it over the hedgehog. So I've stuck the um, frisket down and now I am going over the spiky bits all around the hedgehog's body using the masking fluid. 
So use an old disposable brush if you don't have a bottle with a small little nib on it. But I do want to get the same little hairy, fine little flicks of hair at the side of the frisket. Because when we do the paint in the background, we don't want any of the paint to get on there. And then when we peel off the masking fluid, it's going to just keep the white of the paper. These little bottles are so handy. I'm, I can't remember where I bought them from, but I think I bought like a box of 12. Or they were in one of the art boxes. So I'll see if I can get any more or find out where I got them from. And then let you guys know because it does make it so much easier working with the masking fluid without having to destroy a brush. Okay, so here comes a really fun and scary part all at the same time. I've mixed some watercolors up and now I'm just going to spray the paper and hope for the best. So I've got this little spray bottle and the colors I'm going to use are a red, an orange and a yellow. And then I just want to make a warm background. So I'm dipping my brush into some water and mixing up some of the red. I'm sort of just dabbing it on the page with a brush and hoping that it sort of just flows into whatever watery bits are there. I haven't used watercolors before, so I really am just playing around. So I'm gonna spray it some more. And then I'm going to add some orange.
I'm just adding in some red to enhance some of the darker areas around the orange. Now I want to add some yellow. So just continue spraying and playing around with the watercolors in the water. And um, don't be afraid of it, just have fun see what happens So that was just me using a paper towel to try and um, dab off any excess water. Although the paper towel left marks that I didn't quite like, so... Anyways, wait for it to dry and then once you can see it, then you can decide if you want to do anything further. The paper did end up drying flat, so taping it down on every edge very firmly is definitely the way to go to make sure your paper comes back to normal. So while adding the red bits there under the pores, I didn't notice until after I removed the masking fluid that it had the color had bled in under the frisket. So make very sure that you stick down the frisket properly and you seal it properly when it comes to the masking fluid. So I'm now going to remove the frisket and the masking fluid and You can see how much it's bled in underneath the hedgehog because I didn't check that I sealed it properly. So when remo removing the masking fluid, you just rub, rub it with the tips of your fingers and it will come straight off. I'm dabbing, dabbing any excess off of the paper towels. I sort of wish I didn't do this because I did rub a little bit and it did rub some of the paper and give it a rougher texture. So um, I wouldn't do that again next time. So to cover the extra paint that got all over the feed, I'm applying a bit of a white airbrush paint. So uh, airbrush ink. So this will definitely cover it because it's an opaque white ink that's made to cover whatever colors there i just knew it would work so i just took some of the white um, opaque ink from a airbrush kit that i've got and i just did a couple of layers of this until i thought it was sort of light enough to be able to use so that the red doesn't stick out too much because i still want to put color pencil over the top and i don't want it to be so red so now I'm going to use the Uni Pasco 0.7mm pen to make patterns. 
to the background and because I feel like the background looks a little bit blotchy at the moment so I want to add something different and, and easy to add patterns if you feel like you can't come up with any is to look up mandalas so look for one pattern in a mandala and pick the one you like the most and just do this for one or two patterns and you'll find that you'll end up doing this naturally as you go um, you'll start developing your own patterns and it just gives the picture a little bit more of a um, a flare, something different and the background doesn't look as plain and blotchy and I thought it ended up giving it quite a nice effect. So yeah, I just had a, a look at a couple of mandalas and then I literally just did one pattern off of a uh, part of one and then the rest of the way I went on my own and I just carried on going. So because you just have to think of one pattern, you sort of do that along or across the entire section that you're working with so you're just repeating the same pattern as you go round and round so you just have to really come up with one pattern and then it sort of flows from there so I really really love the Uniposco white paint marker it's very opaque and it works really nicely and I don't find it's not like the jelly roll pen where it just it doesn't roll out the the ink as easily or as well so the white uni posco paint marker is even better than other paint markers that i've tried before i really love this pen and i know that i'm going to use it a lot so a couple of things that i've learned in this tutorial so far is to double check that the frisket and masking fluid are properly adhered to the paper and stick all the edges of your watercolor paper down firmly with masking tape to make sure that the paper doesn't dry or warped so don't be shy when painting with watercolors, wet the surface as much as you want and add watercolors as much as you want. Watercolors dry a much lighter pigment so it's easy to continue with more on top of each other, um, especially if you aren't satisfied with the previous layers. But the most important thing is not to be afraid of experimenting and make sure you have fun. So this is part one of two tutorials. The next tutorial is going to be more detailed. So we'll be using our Caran Dash Luminense pencils over the hedgehog. And be creative. And thank you guys so much for watching. So you guys rock. And I will see you guys in the next video.